What's a hobby that's dying in popularity? I'm a coin collector, it's dying. This might be a bit controversial, but since I do this, I'll mention it, because that's how I feel. Playing drums. Real drums. MIDI is making us obsolete. Don't get me wrong, there are still applications for the drums. Especially if you want the groove, or feel of a live drummer. But bedroom music production has just skyrocketed even more due to the pandemic. And not everyone has enough space for a full acoustic kit. Ham radio. I remember as a kid listening to my dad's radio and him always having a good time and genuinely enjoying a good rag chew. I got my license and tuned into some of the local repeaters. Found some nets with the most depressing things I've ever heard. People talking about their terminal illnesses or how prescription costs are killing them. Stamp collecting. It used to be a huge thing but not anymore. Probably because of the rise of email slash very few people send letters anymore. They have them at estate sales all the time for super cheap. Model rocketry. When I was a kid, we all built and glued and fired off model rockets with rocket engines and stuff. Postcard collecting. I buy a postcard of each place I visit. Some places I have visited in the world, very hard to find a postcard. Hardest country, as we're only here for a day on a cruise, Dominica. I'm surprised this hasn't come up, but China slash crystal collections. Another one would be sterling silver, tea sets, cutlery etc. Slot cars. In the UK it is 100% croquet. I know what a cliché. When I was younger everyone had a croquet set, and it was a great way to enjoy time with friends on a summer day in the garden, whereas now I don't know anyone that still owns one. Maybe a strange one, but this question got me thinking. Model trains. There is a store in our town square that has been there for like 50 years, that specializes in model trains. It's called a train and toy store, but there are almost no toys there. The store is interesting to walk around in, if you are not claustrophobic, but he must not sell very much, because he can't pay the rent anymore. He is closing and moving out of town to some building he owns. Again, the stuff looks cool, but I have never seen anyone buy anything. Geocaching. Which is weird because I still do it sometimes while biking around. But caching apps rarely alert me of any finders in the apps now. I put $20 in what used to be a super popular cache that people would visit daily like 15 years ago. I later turned, about 6 months later, and the same items including the $20 were in there. Pen pals. As a teenager, I loved writing letters to new people and receiving letters from all over the country and the world. Everything is instant now, but nothing beats that feeling of getting a letter in the mail that is specifically for you, that is not a bill, ad circular and comes from someone that genuinely wants to brighten your day. Historical reenacting. Folks no longer want to play dress up in a chi wool and educate folks on whatever period was their jam. Its heyday was late 90s when you could find a group that did just about any period you could imagine. Coercion Beanie Babies. Collecting all 50 US state minted quarters. I remember there used to be TV commercials selling you fancy cardboard with holes in them to help you collect them all. LOL. OHH how times have changed. Building model airplanes. Flying kites never see that shit anymore. Wingsuit flying used to be really popular, but then many of them died and it quickly fell out of popularity. Indoor roller skating rinks. Edit. Skating has become popular, yes, but weirdly the number of roller skating rinks seems to be going down. The four within 25 miles of me closed down over the last 15 years. I don't know of any new ones, and I'm not sure where to go in New England to find an operating rink nowadays. Meanwhile there's lots of private outdoor groups. It must just be too expensive to have the scare footage. To support a roller skating rink in an urban area. General aviation slash being a private pilot. 
a series of lawsuits against plane manufacturers combined with insane certification requirements for airplanes and parts have made it so that buying new planes or replacement parts is ludicrously expensive for pretty much anyone earning less than $500,000 per year. Old used aircraft from the heyday of the 60s 80s had been filling the void to an extent over the years, but they are starting to get really worn out, and people feel less and less comfortable flying them as time goes on. And unfortunately there's just no replacements as they age out. As an example, a brand new Cessna 172 in 1969 cost $12,500, about $90,000 in today's money. Today, a 2021 model would cost around $400,000. Flying radio-controlled helicopters and airplanes. Why would someone want to deal with all the hassle of flying a model helicopter that is insanely difficult to fly when they can buy a DJI drone that has a first-person video stream, records video in 4K, and can fly around by itself via GPS? Yo-yo. Tatting lace. Bridge. Super complex game, has layers and layers of rules, and it's dead. Drag racing, the vehicle kind. A major track in Georgia just got sold because of a local battery plant is being built nearby and the houses around it skyrocketed in value. Edit, since there was confusion, the plant apparently has 50k jobs, so a local residential area spiked four families moving here for the job as it's only a few minutes drive, but far enough away that it isn't an eyesight either. Paintball. Teacher here. Hobbies in general are dying, his, part of, why. I regularly meet parents who balk at the idea of their child doing something for fun. Unless it can translate to a career or a college application it's viewed as a waste of time and money. And if it can translate to one of those then there is crushing, constant, pressure to be the best at it. We are raising a generation of children who cannot comprehend of hobbies. Not sure if it was a real hobby, but typewriting will die out eventually. The last typewriter's factory closed some years ago. Ceramics. There used to be two or three shops in every small town where you could go, pick a piece, clean it. They would fire it for you then go back a week later and paint it. They fire it for you again. Then you go and pick up your finished masterpiece. It was so refreshing. The Rotary Club, the Elks, the Masons, the League of Women Voters, all kinds of fraternal organizations. Beyond that participation in all kinds of civic organizations, churches, labor unions, sports leagues, hobbyist clubs are way down from previous generations. Americans used to be world renowned for their enthusiastic participation in clubs and civic organizations of all kinds. Now we are becoming an increasingly atomized society. The cost is that today the average American has fewer closer friends, is less likely to know their neighbors, and has less of an informal support network than at any point in history. Scrapbooking. No one prints pictures anymore. Model trains. The hobby is absolutely dead. Entire train collections are being sold for literal pennies on the dollar. An engine that used to cost $500 may not even sell for $5. Collecting spoons. I'm a teenager, yet I often enjoy finding spoons at cool tourist attractions. My personal favorite is one I got from Prague during Christmas time. It has a revolving dice in the handle. Whiffle ball. Every boy from 8 to 13 had one. Hobbies. I feel like everything has to be a side hustle now, and people don't just do shit for fun anymore. Racquet ball. Ventriloquism. Based on young people I know, bowling, billiards and poker are fading. Board games was experiencing a boom until covered. D&D is super popular again. Swing dancing got really popular for a while in the late 90s. Haven't heard much about that in a long time. Bell ringing, in countries with bell towers, I know not everywhere has them.